Welcome to the J. Kim Show. This is your host, J. Kim. I am an investor, author, and fitness entrepreneur. And for the first time in Asia, I sit down with the world's most brilliant minds in business, investing, and entrepreneurship. You'll learn all the secrets, strategies, and formulas to becoming a successful entrepreneur directly from the masters. If this is your first time listening, thank you for stopping by. This podcast is produced every week with the goal of providing actionable insight to you, the listener, with every single episode. And now, on to the show. Today's show guest is Siu Ray Kwek. He's one of the co-founders of Carousel. If you live in Asia, you've definitely heard of Carousel. It's one of the hottest startups based out of Singapore that's in the scene right now. They just closed a $35 million Series B round last August, and the company's doing really well. Carousel is essentially a mobile shopping app. It's similar to eBay, but it's very mobile-based and optimized. So all you have to do when you download the app is if you have something that you want to buy and sell, new or used, all you do is snap a photo of it, upload it, and within 30 seconds, you've posted it online and you are connected with a social network of followers who like the same types of products that you just posted. It's a very simple concept. C. Ray and his co-founders were trying to solve a personal pain point and they came across a billion dollar idea. My wife uses Carousel a lot. I think it's a great app. Now that we have two kids, two little girls, and number three on the way coming up soon, we have a ridiculous amount of just baby stuff that keeps piling up. And so it's a perfect way to get rid of some of that stuff. C. Ray is a very down to earth guy. He has some great insights on his journey and how to build a company and how to be successful. So let's get on to the show. Sue Ray, thank you so much for joining the Jay Kim Show. We're very excited to have you here as uh, being one of uh, Asia's uh, rising stars, so to speak. Um, this is quite unique because a lot of my show guests are actually from the overseas. And so I always ask them to explain uh, to our audience locally who they are and what they do. But this is the other way around. So for our listeners coming in from overseas, from perhaps the U.S. and uh, the and Europe, uh, Sire, if you could just give us a quick introduction, who you are and what do you do for a living? Um, sure. So you know, thanks for having me on the show. I'm very excited to be sharing our story and in introducing what we do. Um, so, so my name is Sire. I'm one of the co-founders of Carousel. You know, we started about four and a half years ago now. Um, so together with my two other co-founders, Lucas and Marcus, um, you know, I initially was involved very much with product. Um, so, you know, essentially figuring out what we should be building, what problems we should be solving. Um, eventually also wireframing the products, things like this eventually got involved with launching markets, customer support and, and the works, right? Um, so, um, that's how startups go. Like you do whatever that needs to be done. And eventually now I work closely with the executives of the company on the overall um, strategy and, and vision. So so that's me. Yeah. Fantastic. And for people that haven't heard of what Carousel is, maybe you could give us a quick introduction of your company and what exactly Carousel does. Yeah, for sure. So, so Carousel essentially is a mobile classified app that makes selling as easy as taking a photo and buying as easy as chatting, right? So, you know, how is this relevant to you? Like, we believe that everyone at home has something unused or at least underused that uh, should deserve a new home or benefit someone else. So if you've got an old camera or book or an old dress that you're not using anymore, you should be listing up for sale connecting it with someone else who might benefit from it, at least save some money or could, you know, uh, for instance, I sold one of my old MacBooks to this dad who bought it for his primary school daughter who just wanted her to experience the internet and he couldn't afford a brand new one. So things like this, right? Stuff that's unused at home should find themselves a new home and benefit someone else. And we've made it super simple with, with the carousel experience. So just snap a photo and put a title and a price and it's up for sale in 30 seconds. That sounds amazing. Okay, so before we dig into Carousel, I want to take a step back and talk a little bit about your background and your your history, sort of if your entrepreneurial beginnings, how you decided that you wanted to pursue building a company, doing a startup, and also sort of the 
if you had support from your family, I know this is a this is a big thing for us in Asia. Where yeah. Asian parents aren't necessarily 100% always supportive of entrepreneurship. Uh, a lot of times they try to to steer their children to go into something more conservative and perhaps more quote unquote safe. So tell yep. us about your experience uh, with with that, Sire. Sure. So I, I was in school, National University of Singapore. I was actually in business school. So I was doing my bachelor's in business administration. My first two years there, you know, I was essentially going through the motion of uh, what a business school student would, right? So literally, um, they were ingraining into you that success is, uh, you know, clearing 13 rounds of interviews with Goldman Sachs and you should be an investment banker, or management consultant, <laughs> or a product manager in a CPG company, right? So that, exactly. that was success you know being built into us but you know in my third year of school one of the things i was fortunate to be part of was this thing called the the noc program so it's nus overseas college where they sent us overseas for a year to silicon valley in california usa that was where we you know worked full-time as interns in small companies and tech startups so 20 30 people in a company technology-based products and you know i was in a, in a company called VC, it's a video conferencing software company, and I was a product manager there. So, you know, you know, being a product manager there, you get your hands in everything. So it was a great hands-on experience to learn the ins and outs of a startup. Mm. But actually, the real magical thing was just being in the valley itself, right? So we took classes at Stanford. Um, you know, we everywhere you go, like the coffee shops, take the train, everyone's talking about startups, about apps and the latest technology. And you're part of this culture where... People there speaking at events, your guest lecturers are uh, people like Jack Dorsey of Twitter, right? right. Uh, co-founder of Twitter and Square. And when you hear their stories, like these guys are just fundamentally passionate about technology and about solving problems at scale. Right. And so, you know, that one year really changed my mind and my co-founders' minds. They also went through the same program. It was when we realized that we love technology. We love how technology could make a big impact in the world. And, you know, that was how we got started even tinkering around with products and building products. So that was, in essence, how we got started with even figuring out the first steps of Carousel, right? So we came back to Singapore. We started learning how to build apps. And one of those apps that we started building was uh, an app that we wanted for ourselves, which, you know, just wanted to declutter our life. So we built a, a Snapless Cell app, which eventually became Carousel. And, you know, we, we brought it to a hackathon. Um, so in 54 hours, we put together a prototype of it. On Friday night, we, we shared the idea through the next 54 hours, built a prototype, demoed it on a Sunday night. And we realized that this app was actually solving a problem for way more than just three of us. And that was when we realized that, hey, we're onto something quite special. Like this problem seemed to resonate with a lot more people. And this was March 2012. Mm. Uh, I was just finishing up my final semester in school. And, you know, it's a crossroads, right? You decide, you know, to do a startup or to go and find a job because that's what society expects of you in Singapore and Asia. That's right. Um, so you know, May 2012 came. We decided like, hey, this is too exciting. We really love tech. We want to see how far we can go with Carousel. Uh, and we took the plunge to do this full time in May 2012. So that was a time we made our parents really, really angry as well. <laughs> so we had, so in fact, that has been one of the toughest things about starting Carousel is just actually telling your parents that you're going to do a startup yes. uh, because they fully expect you to go get a job, a good job and uh, in the corporate world. But eventually, you know, they, they become one of our largest supporters now, but initially they weren't too happy. Uh, but, you know, May 2012 was when we went heads down really started building the product. All three of us were self-taught, so we spent the next three months heads down building the first version of Carousel. It wasn't a very good version, but it, it worked. So we launched it on 13 August 2012, and you know the rest was history. Yeah. Wow. So, so first of all, your two co-founders, did you know them before you went to Silicon Valley in the program, or you met them there? So Marcus, I actually have known since 2007, I think. So this was in Poly, Nian Poly in Singapore, where we went to school together, where we did our diploma in business. Right. So I had known him then already. We kept in touch. We've always wanted to do something together. Mm. Um, and eventually, you know, when the carousel problem was interesting for us to go solve, uh, we, we roped him in. Um, and I also met you know, Lucas during my year in, in California. So 
uh, Marcus I knew earlier, but Lucas I only knew in Silicon Valley, and we were actually housemates. So we we used to spend weekends hacking together, just ah. building apps, and uh, that was how we got together. Yeah. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, so the three of you were there in Silicon Valley. All three of you were going through this transformation. You were like, caught the bug. You're like, I want to change the world with something big. And perfectly enough, you are all living together, so you can just spend your weekends and nights hacking together, whatever you can. Um, and so, what as the product sort of developed along its way, were there natural roles that that come in that came that each person played? Uh, so, for example, if you are, you know, I guess it, it's a little bit different because you guys started from the from the ground together as the three of you. But let's say you were just building a company separately, you'd probably try to hire a tech guy, a marketing manager and whatnot. So were there natural roles that you guys just fell into? Yeah. So so actually, one of the, the coolest things about Carousel and, and me and my co-founders is that we are extremely complementary, right? So you know, I did product and you know this was mainly user experience set of things, wireframing, but I'm terrible when it comes to pushing pixels and, and whatnot, right? So that's where Marcus fills that gap, right? So he's passionate about photography and you know, photos are just about pixels and he loves design. So he actually took naturally uh, took care of all things, brand design, app design, web design. And eventually, once he took my wireframes, translated it into a, you know, what the button should look like, the color scheme of the app, then Lucas would engineer it. So Lucas actually built the first version of Carousel's backend on Python and Django, and he also built the first version of iOS. So wow. very complementarily, we, we fell in place as one product team that uh, was self-sufficient, right? So we did everything in-house. We were bootstrapping Carousel. It was just three of us in our laptops. We had no funding for the next 18 months. And it was just us and our laptops and building this with savings, right? So we could go a long way without funding or without um, in a pre-revenue state because it was just three of us building products self-sufficiently. That's great. That's such a good story. And so now let's talk about the time when you were coming up to graduation. You had been tinkering along with this startup. All three of you, each one had to go to your respective parents and have the talk. How, yes. do you, how, how did you approach it? How did you feel uh, when there was obviously some pushback or resistance, as I would imagine? And what sort of tips would you give to people that are listening in that might be in a similar situation and they're nervous about approaching their parents? Right. Here's a tip. Don't pick the right date. Don't, don't do it <laughs> at your dad's birthday dinner. <laughs> so that, that's what I did. I chose the worst time to break the news to them. Oh, really? uh, you know, when I, when I told them, I, I was obviously nervous to tell them. Right? I had no idea what they were going, how they were going to react. Mm -hmm. I certainly knew they were you know, quite averse to the idea of me starting a company. And so I was quite nervous telling them. So I eventually told them over dinner. It was my dad's birthday dinner. <laughs> and, you know, it was really hard. As soon as I told them, uh, I could tell the look of disappointment on both my dad and mom's face. Right. And it was really, really hard. Like, so I, I think at least my brother was there to to encourage me and comfort me. Mm. But you know, you, you just had to pick yourself up and just move on. You've made a decision, just commit to it and go with it, right? So the next couple of weeks and months, like what we did was we just showed our parents that we were truly committed to this. We were not mucking around. We knew what we were doing. You know, in Singapore, one of the fortunate things we have is that the government and the university have been very supportive in creating an ecosystem here. Right. So we actually had an office to go into. Oh. Right, so they had a co-working space that was set up by the university incubator. So we actually had an office, right? So that helped a lot. Like it was legit. Like, okay, fine. You you guys <laughs> actually have a, a workspace to go to. Right. And a couple of weeks after we launched our app in August, we were so fortunate to be covered by the national newspaper. So we had like a half page story on Carousel. Uh, and the title was like, NUS ace chases um, startup dream round the carousel amazing and, and you know it's it's really irrational right like new stories and all that don't count anything to business success in fact the earliest days of carousel was really challenging in getting traction like mm. it wasn't until i think after a year later before we got meaningful traction 
But, you know, to parents, you know, they see that, oh, wow, newspaper coverage, you guys must be real. <laughs> so since then, they've been fans, you know, they can cut it out, show my grandparents. That's so right. just a combination of showing them that you're absolutely committed to this, that you're very serious about it. You know, it's a real thing, real office, and actually real validation from the media and press really helps a lot. Um, and, you know, they are bigger supporters now. Right. That's awesome. So, almost, almost embarrassing the, <laughs> to the extent where they're constantly <laughs> going around and talking to people about Carousel. <laughs> That's amazing. That's such good advice, though. Um, not only the birthday dinner and timing part, but I think really just proving and stepping up and showing to your parents that, look, I'm serious about this. This is not just me on the couch uh, on my laptop screwing around with my friends. I'm really serious about this. And, you know, I mean, I think that that. At every 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 parent just wants their kid to be successful or happy and and not starving on the street. So the fact that you were able to follow through on that is is amazing. Okay, so fast forward. Uh, now we are we're sitting here. Carousel is huge now. You know, I don't I don't think my wife uses it all the time here in Hong Kong. She loves it because it is perfect. Once you have kids, the the amount of stuff that you have that needs to be uh, sold is amazing. The amount that piles up. So uh, the first question on that is so Carousel. The first parallel is obviously everyone's like, oh, this is kind of like eBay. Yep. How does it differ from eBay? I mean, obviously it's a very conceptually a very similar model. Model, I imagine it's much easier to use and much more accessible. So what are the main differences there? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the thing about Carousel and the beauty of it is that we're not actually reinventing a business model at all, right? No, I've been a user of marketplaces and classifieds as I was growing up. And, you know, the, the key thing was I even used things like eBay and Gumtree and so on as I was growing up as a kid, right? Mm. But one day we just sat around and decided to build Carousel for the exact reason that we stopped using these services. We started using the mobile device a lot more. Mm. Uh, you know, we spent all our time on our smartphones, you know, doing everything on the internet. And we felt like, hey, why not buying and selling too? And it actually, by the way, could make it a lot simpler, right? So we used to sell on like forums and desktop marketplaces. It would take like 10 minutes plus to create a listing, like a good listing. Mm -hmm. On Carousel, it's you now snap a photo and a title and a price and it's up for sale in like 30 seconds to a minute. So very, very simple experience. Um, mobile was definitely that first differentiator that we had and I think it's transformational. We built in a chat system so that um, transactions and, and replies and interactions are a lot more instantaneous. You don't have to wait until you're back home on your computer before you reply to a PM or a message. You can reply on the fly. Right. And that helps a lot with the user experience. Uh, if you're a seller, you want to make sure you get back to your buyer as soon as possible, right? That increases your chances of selling something. And, you know, other features that we've built in that are quite fundamentally different is that we've built in this social element to it. Mm. So on Carousel from day one, you could follow people that you actually like, you know, you share similar interests with, you can like and comment on things. It's, it's very interactive. We've also built this feature called groups because we saw that People are buying and selling one another, not just because of dollars and cents, but because they actually shared an interest. You know, people who like Pokemon Go, people who like Lego, uh, they wanted to congregate together on the platform and actually buy and sell from one another. Because that experience of buying and selling between each other is, is not just a transactional one, but it's an opportunity for you to make a friend. Um, and each transaction we believe in is essentially an exchange of stories. Mm -hmm. So so fundamentally, those are the key differences. You know, Carousel is it's very mobile-centric. It's very community-centric. It's very instantaneous because of the, the way mobile has enabled. Snapping a photo is very snappy experience. It's um, connecting people very seamlessly through chat. Uh, so those are high, on a high level why we're fundamentally different here. Yeah. Right. I think the community aspect is very interesting because it really, it's actually, it makes perfect sense when it comes to things like collectibles or, or more niche uh, products that are being moved on your site because, you know, I mean, it, it's not like, it's not all laptops or, or Kindles, you know, I mean, there's there's some yeah. very personal items that are are being bought and sold. And, and I think that the community aspect is huge because you want to find like-minded people and people that share the same interests as you. So it's a perfect platform for that. So as far as the basic transaction goes, you, you snap a photo, you post it, 
connect with, say, a buyer, how does the back end of that transaction work? As as in, let's say I've matched with you, I want to buy your your laptop. You just chat and you find a place to meet up, and and that's 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 all, that's as far as it goes. You know, I think some transactions end up that way, but essentially what we built was a hammer, right? So we we built the tools for you to list an item, for you to discover items, and we built a chat system for people to get connected. And fundamentally, we just leave it up to people to go figure out how they transact. Mm. I think one of the things we've learned is that if you're building a platform that caters to millions of users, you can't second guess how they're going to use the platform. So give them the basic tools, let them go figure it out on uh, make, make it really flexible for them to go figure out how to do deals. So one of the use cases that you described was that people do meetups to, mm. you know, they chat on the platform, they figure out which MTR they should go to, to go deal. But we also see many ways of transactions where sometimes people end up meeting at each other's people's homes, or they would do a transaction where they would actually post something or they would call an on-demand delivery service to, to get the item fulfilled. So there are many, many ways that uh, people have creatively used the platform, you know, meeting up in school and meeting up at the workplace are uh, just some other examples too. I think fundamentally, we just want to give people the tools to connect and then we allow them to go figure out what's the best arrangement mutually to, to get the item fulfilled or the transaction completed. That said, you know, we are fundamentally in the business of uh, uh, product-wise very much focused on removing friction, right? So if we see certain patterns of transactions happening where we can actually have the opportunity to go streamline that experience, we want to find a way to build and productize that, right? So mm. we find that meetups happen a lot at MTRs. Maybe you want to build a scheduling system so that people can more seamlessly match up their times where they can meet. Right. Or if they're doing a lot of uh, shipping kind of transactions, then maybe at some point we want to streamline that. But fundamentally, we, we just want to build a platform that's almost like a hammer, right? We just want to allow the community to be very creative about how they deal. Right. And and the name Carousel, is that like the merry-go-round? Is that the reason why you guys chose that? Or is there a story behind that? Yeah. So, so you know, the, here's a, a fun fact. Like Carousel was not known Carousel from day one. Actually, we were known as Snapsell before. Okay. So, you know, we found it a bit too utilitarian um, and we really wanted to bring this emotional appeal to this. Mm -hmm. So one day we're just sitting around finding a name uh, and one of those TV shows that we really like is called Mad Men. So it's about, you know, this advertising show. Don Draper, yep. Yeah, Don Draper. So one of the episodes, you know, Don Draper was pitching the wheel. So the Kodak Carousel. Mm. And we're just looking at that presentation and we're like, hey, isn't this very much what we're trying to achieve with carousel, right? So each slide is essentially your carousel listing, you know, it's being projected into a marketplace, you know, on a projector. It's a merry-go-round, it goes round and round, things go from one person to another. And we added an L uh, to play the pun of selling. So wow. all in all, it was uh, just a, a perfect name in combination. And if you look at the icon and the logo, it looks like a camera, but it's actually the, the top-down view of what a Kodak Carousel projector is. Ah. Um, and if, if you didn't, didn't know that, at least it still looks like a camera and, and that it still resembles Snapless Cell, right? It still means, uh, in essence, the core value proposition, proposition of Carousel. So the name, the icon, and logo was like a, a perfect package for us. And uh, we all love the name dearly. That is genius. That's very, very savvy. I like that. I, I had no idea. That's a great story. This is very interesting. So let's talk about uh, the company, where it's at now, funding, and, and as far as uh, how you see the growth coming up, what are your goals for 2017 and beyond? And, uh, you know, as far as monetization, uh, you know, that was, a, that was a big topic of discussion around how that's going to pan out and ultimately what your exit goal is. Yeah, sure. So I think that's a really, really broad question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, fundamentally uh, in 2017, we want to do three main things, right? I think the, the first thing is continuing our international expansion. You know, that means deepening our presence in our existing markets as well as like continuously exploring what other markets we could uh, expand into and you know behind that is that fundamental purpose i shared with you uh which is we we 
ultimately just want to be able to solve problems and build impact and make impact at a very large scale. And we feel like this problem is a, a global problem that we're solving. We still remain one of the few players in the world to be tackling this problem. And we want to continue to use all the lessons and insights we've gotten in the past one and a half years to benefit even more people worldwide. Hence that focus on internationalization. The second piece of it is uh, related to, I guess, monetization, right? Mm -hmm. So we are a classified business model that's existed for a long time. It's a great business model to be in. We're not reinventing it at all, right? It's a 50 plus percent EBITDA margin business. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the public comps of this kind of classified companies. So very, very great business model. And we want to start executing towards that business model this year. Why this year? Because we now have more resources. We have several large markets in our portfolio of markets. And it makes sense to do it now. Mm. So this is the time where we are going to be starting and you know, the Kali acquisition that you know about. Mm -hmm. uh, so we bought a cars marketplace company a quarter ago, mm -hmm. and that's paving the way for a monetization strategy. So um, starting off with you know subscriptions for car dealerships, but also then moving on to what we call performance products or visibility products. So helping our sellers sell even faster and quicker. Uh, through you know things like promoted posts, premium services, and premium listings, and these are traditional same revenue products as traditional classifieds companies, right? So you know, we have the benefit of applying you know what has already worked for many 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 years, except that now we have proven that we can create a much better user experience for mobile, a much stickier one, and actually inspiring a whole new generation of people to participate in this because of the simplicity. And the third focus for the company this year is really doubling down on our core of product. Um, so Carousel has gotten where we are today because we were very much focused on solving problems with technology, building great products for users, great, great user experiences. And, you know, it's a work in progress. In Carousel, we have this saying, we're less than 1% done. You know, we've built a product that's working for millions of users today, but we're never ever content. We're always staying close to a community, listening to what problems they're facing in the platform, what needs they have, and using those insights to continuously improve on our product, right? So you know, some examples of what we're gonna be working on this year is really having a big focus on uh, applying data science to improving discovery. So we have now more than 57 million listings on the platform. How can we better efficiently match up demand and supply? And, you know, we have this advantage now of so many much data points of what our users are liking, commenting on browsing and listing. And we should use that to tailor their own carousel experience. Whenever they open it, they, we should be able to get give them a good, a faster way to access items that they'll likely want to browse and eventually buy. Uh, so discovery will be a big part of it, continuously removing friction, improving our chat systems, exploring ways of how we can help people transact um, even quicker. Mm. And, you know, on the back end of things also, we want to constantly be improving efficiency across our operations, right? So how do we ensure that our users see the best quality listings? You know, do we keep bad actors off the platform? Like, so these are a few big areas that we're working on on our product. Um, in addition to, you know, going into verticals like cars and applying a monetization. And, you know, all this combined just really reinforces our strategy and international strategy to be, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, Apex dominant classified site, as well as eventually being the world's, one of the world's largest or hopefully the world's largest classified business. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. I just have a couple more questions. I know we have to wrap up soon. First question in the finale here. What does success mean to you in the, the, in the sort of the, the grand scheme of things? You know, you've obviously have come grown carousel uh, a long way. You personally have have grown a lot. You've achieved a lot of milestones along the way. How would you define personal success to yourself? Sure. So, so you know, like I say, we, we're really less than 1% done for the reason that, uh, you know, for me, success is, is less about, you know, making a, a billion dollars, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's really about the ability to build products and services that could potentially benefit and help a billion people. For me, that is success, right? Ability to make impact at an outsized scale is success. Okay. And second, the last question is, 
for all the aspiring entrepreneurs that see, have heard your story now today and just you know are super inspired by what you did coming out of school, coming up with the idea with your team and building this uh, you know this huge huge company, what's what's one piece of advice that you would want to leave them with? I think for founders and aspiring entrepreneurs, um, you need to be absolutely passionate about what you're going to be doing, you know, uh, what problem you're solving, because startups are going to be very hard. It's very, very hard. Every single day is going to be hard. Like the only easy day was yesterday. <laughs> and you're going to be running into challenges after challenges. And the only reason why you keep going is because you're absolutely passionate about the problem you're solving. Because you won't settle until you solve that problem well. So I think for startups, aspiring entrepreneurs, you know, you have to really find what you love before you commit to it, right? It's just going to be extremely difficult journey. Great advice. And last question is where can people find you, follow you and connect with you or see what you're working on these days? Yeah, so I'm on social um, everywhere with a very simple and boring handle. It's just my name, Siurei, S-I-U-R-U-I. So yeah, hit me up on Twitter or, or email me at um, sr at carousel.com. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. We've had a great time catching up with you, hearing your amazing story. And we're definitely going to keep an eye out on your journey and your success. Thanks again for coming on the show. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. All the show notes and links can be found over at jkimshow.com. Come back often and make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. Don't forget to join us next week for another exciting episode of The J. Kim Show. I'd love to hear your comments. You can find me on Twitter at jkimmer, J-A-Y-K-I-M-M-E-R. See you guys next week. This podcast is brought to you by Hack Your Fitness, the high achiever's guide to getting ripped in under three hours a week. If you're anything like me, you're probably working a full-time job or jobs and trying to find time to balance family life, social life, and last but not least, fitness. Look, I get it. I'm a full-time investor and entrepreneur myself and father of two. So how am I able to stay fit year-round without spending hours and hours in the gym killing myself on the cardio machine? After struggling for the last 15 years trying every workout and diet under the sun, I finally designed a system that allows me to achieve and maintain single-digit body fat for life in under 3 hours a week. Cardio not required. Head on over to hackyour.fitness and download my free 13-page guide that teaches you the simple science behind efficient fitness and smart nutrition and gives you everything you need to know to finally take control of your life. That's hackyour.fitness.